Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. Salam sejahtera. Uh, good morning to everybody. Uh, sebelum saya mulakan mungkin sedikit saya ingin uh, mengetahui latar belakang rakan-rakan yang ada di sini. I like what Professor Karim said just now. I'm here to share. Ya, yeah, kita untuk berkongsi so that together we can develop. Right? So How many of you from education background? Alright, so I'm, I suppose you have some background knowledge, maybe <laughs> better, some better than me. And then the rest from other faculty. Okay, so even though uh, you are in the seminar form, but my lecture would be very interactive. So I would like to have a full participation, right? So let's not waste our time because when you are here, we give all our attention and commitment to where we are, so that we gain something. Eh? In that sense, so that we don't waste our time because I know we are all very busy. Our profession uh, demand that we uh, invest most of our time to our teaching and learning, especially the preparation part. Yeah. So can you be with me? today for maybe about three hours so that we gain something alright okay so this is my topic is about help your students learn a metacognitive approach how many of you have heard about this metacognitive thing can I see hands heard only <laughs> okay at least you heard something alright uh, I don't do I have a participant list mana over still tak ada eh. Uh, do you have papers with you? Ada kertas tak? Okay, can you fold into three and just put your name and write big so that even I can read your name. You know, I want to be my presentation to be very personal, personalizing uh, you all to me. Eh? Okay. Ada kertas tak? Kertas besar, kertas A4 tak ada. Uh, Liza. Oh, kecil ya. Yeah. Kita mata orang tua ni. You, can, you have to help me so that I can help you. Hmm. Okay. Tak ada kertas langsung ya? Yeah? Okay, whatever. Just fold into three and then bagi saya nampak nama. So, kita lebih mesra. Yeah? Saya Dah kenal saya, jadi saya nak kena kenal rakan-rakan di sini juga. Yeah? Okay. And actually, I need one more paper. One more paper. A4 paper. Urus dia boleh bagi paper tak? Oh. Tak ada paper. Okay. Alright. Ha. I can I can read Fazila. I can read Puva. I can read... Who else? Yes. Tajudin. We just call names here, eh? Kita, kita keluarkan semula all your professor and doctor outside the seminar room. We are all here equal as a friends. Can you accept that? Okay, Alhamdulillah. Alright. Uh, Tian Ping. Because you are near, I can read yours. Rashda. The the back one, please write back. Fatan. Yes, Fatan. Okay. Okay, there are papers here. Maybe you can circulate to them. Okay. So before we start, uh, sebelum kita mula, saya nak ambil satu lagi one A4 paper. You divide into three. The third column tu besar sikit. The first column tu tak payah besar. The third column tu besar sikit. Yeah, we are going to use uh, one tools that I call KWL. The education people should know this. K meaning what I already know about mental cognition. Just right here. What you already know. Okay. And what do you want to know about mental cognition? And the third column would be your what you have learned is the notes that you learn about mental cognition. So this is what you already know about mental condition. 
So I'm giving you some time to write what you already know. Uh, maybe sikit pun tak apalah, whatever you know. Kalau tak tahu, posongkan. Eh? And then you put, what do you like to know about metacognition? You are here on your own way? Or you, you are being forced to come here? Yes. You are forced to come here? Berapa orang kena paksa datang? Hmm. So are you okay? I'm okay. Alright, good girl. <laughs> So I I'm here first to motivate you to be with me for the whole three hours. Yeah, I want your hundred and one percent commitment. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. So you write here. What do you like to know about metacognition? And here would be what you have learned. Maybe what is metacognition? What the hell is metacognition? Why metacognition? And how? The five, the five uh, uh, question. Okay. Okay. Right. So from time to time, I will go back here. This is like your roadmap for these three hours. Okay. Right. Okay. Right. So nampaknya pen-pen sudah berhenti bergerak. So we can move on. I'm going to show you one video. I want you to pay attention to the video because there will be some uh, activity after that. So you have to really look uh, and maybe do some analyzing about what you are going to say. Yeah? Just read the words there. I'd love to have stars hanging from my branches. Then I would feel truly special, whisper the little apple tree. Okay. Uh, you have seen the little apple tree? Okay, the little apple tree is shaking its branches. I want you to predict what happened next. What happened next? Okay. I'm going to play again. While you were thinking, based on what you saw just now, what happened next? Okay, write down your prediction. Take a piece of paper, not the KWL, another paper, write down your prediction now. Oh, I forgot my... The question is, what happened next after the little apple tree shaking its branches? Okay. What do you think will happen? Are you done? Have you write your prediction? Everybody? Done. Okay. They will see what happened. Okay. Then you compare. Okay. Let's get a few response from you. What is your prediction like? Okay. Uh, you have read, you have write your prediction kan? So boleh bagi saya beberapa jawapan. Maybe can I start with Fazila? Uh, ah, buah dia jatuh. Itu saja. Nothing happen. The little apple. What happened to the little apple tree? Mature. Okay. Right. So they got the buah jantung. What about you? Ten pink. What happened? The same, I think. Uh, maybe uh, the apple fall down and more apple trees are grown up. The okay. apple fall down and more apple trees will grow up. And another apple tree will cry just like the little apple tree. Okay. Do you have a different answer, Zurina? So, semua buah jatuh, tinggal empty branch sahaja. Right. Kat belakang saya tak nampak lah saya. Belakang sekali. What is your name? Ha, you. Ha. Siapa nama? Gani. Gani. Yes. Cik Gani. Bukan Gani eh? Zaini. Zaini. Sorry. <laughs> yes. What is your prediction? Oh, 
so what happened to that little apple tree? Hmm. Agak-agak dia jumpa tak star dia Maybe Any ada yang nak bagi jawapan? Yes That apple is Her stars What do you mean? Tapi dia tak perasan apple tu star dia. Okay, that is close. Right, let's see what happen next. Yeah. Betul lah, apple jatuh kan? Tapi what happen? The split. Look, said the voice. Look inside yourself. The little apple tree looked down and saw the, that right in the middle of its apple was a star. Okay, that's it. A star, I have a star, cries the little apple tree. And the voice laughed gently and said, So, do you, you do have stars on your branches and you just didn't know. Because when we cut the apple into half, you can see the seed in the form of stars, which the apple itself doesn't know that it actually has a star. Right? So let's find your star today. Okay? Is that motivating enough? Can we find our star today? They might be already inside you. You might be already use it, but you don't label it yet. And they say, oh, actually I have done that, but I don't know. Okay? Because there are a few things that actually we think we don't know, but actually we already do it. But we don't put a label to it. Let's see whether you can find your star. Alright? So, there is our ability to know what we have. Kadang-kadang kita sebenarnya ada. Tapi kita tak tahu bahawa kita ada. Sebenarnya kita dah buat. Tapi kita tak tahu yang kita dah buat. Dia ada beza kita buat dan kita tahu kenapa kita buat dan bahawa kita buat dengan kita buat tetapi kita tak sedar yang kita buat. So you cannot tell others that you sudah buat because you don't have the label to it. Okay? So according to Costa 1981 ni people yang banyak uh, talk about thinking because my background is about thinking, yeah, the thinking processes. So uh, according to Costa our ability to know what we know and what we don't know. Ya, yeah? kita sebenarnya sometimes kita tak oh, oh masa sini boleh buat. Yang ini tak berapa nak tahu. You know, you are talking to yourself to evaluate yourself. What is your strength? What is your weaknesses? What to improve and so on. Right? So, the, this ability is actually meta cognition. Knowing what you know, knowing what you have, knowing what you have done, okay, that is meta cognition. Okay, so this is the basis of of our approach today that I would like to share with everybody here, which is called a meta cognitive approach. Okay, so hopefully, this is very important. At the end of this seminar you would be able to identify what is meta cognition please add here this become your objective you have to focus whenever you do something you must be sure what is your objective so that you can plan how to achieve and you can direct your attention and all your effort to achieve your objective right in education psychology, if you do something without knowing what you are doing or why you want to do it and what is the objective of your action, meaning that you are still in the level, according to PIJ, apa? Level dia? Tindakan tidak bermatlamat. Macam dia nak ambil benda dia mencapai-capai, tak tahu apa dia nak ambil. But now you have an aim, what you want to 
achieve. Yeah. So here you should be able to know what is meta cognition. Of course, why meta cognition is important in the learning process, and how do you use that knowledge in your teaching and learning. So in our activity today, we will be focusing on to achieve this, and hopefully. Whatever you learn here can match with the objective. Okay, so now we are going to a certain direction, and we have identified where we want to go. Kita tak nak ada lagu yang Do you know where you going to? Right? You must make sure where you want to go and what you want to achieve. So it's very important in anything that we want to do. You be sure. What you want to achieve. So when you go to your class, you make sure okay to the outcome of my student, and you must direct your attention. Actually, we should be directing the student attention towards achieving the objective of your lesson. Otherwise, maybe you can just go round and on and on. They don't know where you are going to, so you keep on singing the song. Where are you going to? Right. So lepas ni tak ada nyanyi lagi where are you going to eh because you know where are you heading and what is the objective. Bila kita ada objective, we are very certain where we want to go and we should be planning how to achieve that objective. So that's why when you have this, you are you are directing your attention so that you are achieving what you want to learn today. Right? I want to make sure that your attendance here is. Meaningful, right? <laughs> Even though you are forced to come here, you are going to say, "Oh, thank God, I'm here." All right, Nick. Okay. All right. This is our objective. Okay. So first, we want to know what is meta cognition. So because our topic here is how do we help our students learn? How do we help? Help our students learn. Bagaimana kita nak bantu pelajar kita belajar? Selalu kita dengar ya, uh, kita mak mak kita selalu cakap nak buat sesuatu think first, okay? Fikir dulu sebelum buat sesuatu. Tapi dia ajar kita tak macam nak fikir, okay? So so because the the story here is learning, so we have to identify what is learning. What is learning? The people in the education background should know already. Learning involves refers to the changes in behavior. You know, perubahan dalam tingkah laku. Normally, it refers to the permanent changes in behavior that result. It could be in knowledge, attitude, or skills that resulted from experience, maybe from our instruction or from their own study. Yeah. So what is important here? That is about the 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 definition of learning by behaviorists, which is only focus on observable behavior, but the cognitivism include the unobservable behavior as well, because we don't always show what we know, right? Because we have to find the right situation to perform, so that. They also consider the unobservable behavior. What happened in their mind? Yeah. So whatever perspective of definition about learning, what we can say is learning do involve the processing of information. Have you read the fact sheet that I I I supply you? There are some story about meta cognition, right? Yeah. So learning involve the processing of information. Learning means to understand something. When you understand something, they are a component of information, right? So where do you get the information from? From your experience, from your reading, from what you hear, from your five senses, from your in your sensory input. What you see, what you hear, what you smell, what you touch. What is another one? See, hear, smell, 
tak taste ah selalu kita makan lupa pula yang makan tu ya okey ah on top of that kita akan masuk all the information through our five senses also from whatever we already know what we have learned we have stored in our long term memory have you heard about long term memory ingatan jangka panjang kalau kita dah belajar 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 kita ingat means we already store them in our long term memory that kita akan kalau dia berkaitan dengan what we are thinking what we are learning we will call back the information and use it with the sensory input tadi ya yang kita uh, yang kita dah dapat and the recall information to judge or to formulate something to figure out or to understand that is in the process of learning so that means for that matter we cannot separate learning from thinking when you learn that involve the thinking process yes yes tak ada orang belajar tak fikir dia kena fikir ya yeah? so the thinking is very important in the learning process and of course we can tak boleh pisahkan antara learning and thinking. So what is thinking? What thinking? What is thinking? Are you thinking now? So what happen in your mind when you are thinking? You are must you are trying to recall something from your storage. You, you ada storage tau. Dalam kita punya minda ni ada storage. Long term storage. What you are talk, what you are thinking now is a working memory. Okay, tapi kalau you dah rehearse banyak kali, macam kita baca surah tu ulang banyak kali, dia dah simpan keingatan jangka panjang which you can recall. Yeah. So what is thinking? Okay, from the reading we can see that thinking involve mental manipulation. What I said just now. Mental manipulation of sensory input and recall knowledge to formulate thoughts or to reason or to judge or to whatever the objective of your thinking. That the involve information. The macam bridging kepada learning process. Okay, you must do the thinking. So tadi saya tanya, what happened to your mind? when you are thinking selalu kita berfikir kan do you think do you think that you teach your student to think do you ask your student to think yes yes but do you teach them how to think yes banyak angkut tu that is very good yeah okay according to bayer This is a concept of thinking. Yeah. Dia kata thinking involve three component yang dekat triangle tu. The triangle things. Sorry, I don't have the lupa nak bawa saya punya tu. Focus on the triangle. We have three things. Okay. That is operation, knowledge and disposition. Operation tu refers to the mental operation. Yeah. Uh, knowledge of course when you think they tidak in vacuum there must be some knowledge involved like the information tadi kita cakap yeah it can be a general knowledge or a domain specific knowledge and the disposition ni kita punya kecenderungan untuk berfikir whether you are uh, the degree of tolerance to ambiguity is high or not okay whether you want to use uh, enough information before you make a judgement all that sorts of a uh, disposition and these three uh, components uh, will be influenced by the purpose of thinking and also the thinking environment where do you think in the context of the thinking and the time or duration of the thinking so now we are going to focus on the operation the mental manipulation when you do the thinking yeah So we said that thinking consists of the mental activity that can be described uh, in terms of operation and 
This operation can be divided into two. One is cognitive and the other is metacognitive. I am sure you have do all the cognitive things. Yeah? When we ask people to, to do something, when you give a task to the student, we ask them to find meaning. You know, all the cognitive strategies is used to find meaning. Yeah? Whereas the metacognitive is actually to direct and control the meaning making strategies. There are two things. One is cognitive, the other is metacognitive. When you ask your student to perform a task, they will use all the cognitive strategies. Okay? For example, you ask them to analyze something. You ask them to compare and contrast. You ask them to give attribute of a certain concept. Alright? They will involve a certain cognitive tools that use a certain skills in the thinking. Yeah? I will show you the, the, how, the, how the thinking operation happened here. Okay? You see the red, the red thing. That is the, cogn the cognition. The cognition part. When you do th the thinking, you are using all those skills. You have to recall the first, the, first the first circle inside. You are recalling or you are recording something what you see. Okay? And then you are processing and trying to find, trying to reason out the information. There is also a skill. All this is a mental operation. Right? And then a bigger circle, see whether you use a critical thinking skill or a creative thinking skill. Do you know about these skills? Critical thinking and a creative thinking is a skill. Like how to generate ideas how to evaluate, how to compare and contrast, how to make an inferences. They are the critical thinking skills. Okay? And the bigger circle is the thinking strategies that might involve the decision making or problem solving or you want to conceptualize something. Okay? So, the inner part, the, the, the circle inside is actually the micro skill. Do you think that our students have that skills? They do it. We assume that they have it. Because when we ask them to do something, whether they want or not, they have to do this operation. They have to recall. They have to recall whatever they see. And then they have to process and put some reasoning. Yeah? They kena tak callkan benda tu. Nak fahamkan what it is. Yeah? And then maybe they need to do some critical thinking skill some creative thinking and perhaps they have to do some decision making or some problem solving and all these skills they have some technique step by step how to do it right and the student you ask them to just do it correct you ask them to do it and you will say think first before you do yes okay and that is the cognition that are all the skills, the micro thinking skill and also the macro and the strategies that are used to make meaning, to judge, to evaluate, to understand, to formulate something in order to complete your assignment, right? Or whatever activity that you have in class, okay? But there are another big circle outside which we call metacognition. Okay, when you do ask them to do something, they will perform. But they actually, whether they aware or not, they will ask themselves, okay, how do I do this? How do I do this? What I need to know to do this? They are talking to themselves. That part is metacognition. Okay, look back at yourself. When you have problem, what do you do? to solve the problem. Do you hear that inner dialogue inside you? Aku benda ni, apa aku kena buat? Apa, what is the best strategy to handle this? Yes? Do you have that? Are you aware? 
Now you are aware. Before this, automatically you do it because you are now an expert problem solver. When you have a problem, you know how to do it. Now I ask you to look back. Sekarang kita nak tengok pandang ke dalam otak kita. Tadi kita pandang keluar, mata kita pandang keluar kan? Sekarang we want to make uh, our thinking visible. Same as our objective here to make our students thinking visible. Okay? So the metacognition is the macam kalau in the organization, this is the CEO yang overlooking. Dia super ordinate ke atas cognition ya. Yeah? Okay, dia akan kata, okay, yang ini you can visualize dulu. Or you get the information first. And then you cuba cari apa ciri-ciri dia dalam dua-dua ni kalau nak compare. That one is the metacognition. Dia directing which skill nak guna. Nak guna critical thinking ke, nak guna creative thinking ke, nak guna processing ke, nak guna reasoning ke, nak kena recall balik ke. Siapa suruh? Siapa suruh? Cognition kan metacognition? The metacognition is the CEO tadi, the overlooking. Yang direct your thinking process tadi. Oh, you buat yang ini dulu. Ya, betul ke you buat ni? So, dia ada aspect planning, monitoring and evaluating. This other skill. Uh, planning tu, okay, you buat yang macam ni dulu. Bila, siapa yang buat tu? Yang buat siapa? Yang suruh tu siapa? Metacognition. Yang buat siapa? The cognition. The cognition of the, okay, oh, oh, saya kena compare and contrast dia buat. Eh, lepas tu dia kata, tak payah compare and contrast. Siapa yang cakap tu? Meta. Oh, tak jadi buat. Siapa yang tak jadi buat tu? Cognition. Can you see the difference? They are actually, dalam student learning tu, dia mesti involve dua perkara ini. The cognitive operation and the metacognitive operation. Whether you like it or not, dia memang jadi macam tu. Tapi sama ada you akan lakukannya dengan sempurna ataupun tidak, bergantung you tahu ke tak tahu. Okay? And this all can be taught. Okay? Dia boleh di ajar, boleh di pelajari. Orang banyak ingat semua orang berfikir. Tapi berfikir bukan kebolehan semula jadi. It is not automatic. Not everybody can become an efficient thinker. You can become an efficient problem solver. Tak, dia tak jatuh kat riba macam tu. Kalau tak, tak payah belajar berfikir. Semua orang semula jadi boleh. Tak. Not everybody. Everybody is thinking. But whether they are effective or skillful thinker, that is the difference. Okay? Dan ikut research-research, mereka mengatakan kita boleh ajar kemahiran berfikir. Sebab itu kalau rakan-rakan ingat, di Malaysia kita dah mulakan operasi ni sejak late 1980s lagi. When we embed the critical and creative thinking in the syllabus, infuse sepatutnya budak-budak sekarang dah tahu dah metacognition. Ha, tapi sampai universiti pun mereka tak tahu lagi. Ya? Yeah? Okey. Okey? Macam mana? Ha, just thinking. Itu yang tak jadi tu. Boleh, boleh. Alright? So, can you see the difference between cognition and metacognition? Do you think it is important to know what is metacognition? Dah? So, you dah tahu dia punya how it operates. How in the thinking process and how it relates to the learning process. Ya? Yeah? Okay. Bila saya tengok Nick senyum kan, saya suka hati. So, no. <laughs> you are my motivator today. Make sure you senyum eh. Alright. So, now. Tadi daripada yang function tu, kita boleh katakan ya. Yeah? Of course, ada tiga component. We have metacognitive and cognitive. The cognitive thing is actually the skill, the micro thinking skill. Uh, the processing skill as well as the critical and creative thinking. Ini nanti you boleh google dan cari lebih lagi. Yeah, because our seminar is only 3 hours. Yeah, I only uh, take the tips of it. Yeah, And then also involve the strategies that is decision making skill as well as the problem solving skills. Yeah, And the second part is the metacognitive which study involve 3 skills. Planning, monitoring and evaluating skills. Yeah. Kalau you baca dekat fact sheet tu, sebenarnya kita ada 
uh, ramai eh, researchers and author tentang thinking dia bahagikan metacognition kepada dua one is metacognitive knowledge and the other is meta is regulation of cognition metacognitive regulation yeah how you regulate yeah so bila kita ada the knowledge to actually is the cognitive strategy study kita kena bahagi student ini the range of cognitive strategies how to do things ya yeah? sebab kalau dia tak ada yang strategi tadi the skills yang ni critical creative processing and the strategies macam mana dia nak gunakan itu semasa planning monitoring and evaluate ya yeah? semua skill-skill ni dia sepatutnya tahu what how and when orang education dia biasa dengan tiga jenis pengetahuan kan what is it that three types of knowledge Yeah, I heard the answers. Declarative, procedural and conditional. So when you teach them the strategy, the student should know what it is, how to do it and when to use it. When they are skillful in these three things, what, how, when, then they can be used for the metacognitive operation to plan, monitor and evaluate. Does it make sense? So the range of cognitive tools tu dia kena ada They are doing it But sometimes we don't put a label to it So dia meraba-raba bila nak buat Dia tak tahu which one is which one Kadang-kadang dia buat tapi dia tak tahu which one Ya yeah? So kita uh, gunakan balik semula I hope yang lain pun kita tahu tentang Tak payah gunalah perkataan deklaratif semua-semua tu Very jargon kan It's actually what, how and when Ya yeah? Bila kita ajar strategi, apa bendanya, bagaimana nak buat, bila kita nak gunakan So that dia boleh gunakan the next time when they need to use it Because they have a label to it Ya? Yeah? That's why the why too must be there Why you want to do it? When it is suitable? You know? Okay, people will say whether they become Pak Turut or not. Yeah? Because ini ada debate tentang bila kita kata creativity. Not everything is creativity. Some are the routine thing. Like how do you solve a problem? There are steps, right? That step is the procedural knowledge. The how thing. Okay, when I want to solve a problem, I must identify what is the problem. What are the alternatives? The criteria to evaluate the alternative and to uh, choose the best alternative, implement and see evaluate the outcome. These are the steps that they have to do, right? This become a routine, yeah, sort of. But sometimes they can be flexibly changed according to the situation. There where the creativity takes place. Yeah, okay. So now, do you think that you know what is metacognition? Do you think you know what is metacognition? Agak-agak dah boleh bagi definasi dah. Dah ke belum? Do you need some more? Do you need some more about what is metacognition? Belum? Dah ke belum? Belum eh? Sikit lagi Okay, kadang-kadang orang sebut Metacognition is thinking about Thinking Because you will be thinking about what you are Thinking yeah? Atau cognition about Cognition Okay So boleh tak you Kadang-kadang kan bila kita membaca tu When you read A page Dah habis satu muka tu You masih tak tahu apa yang you baca apa yang aku baca ni? So what do you do? You go, you go back to the first sentence. That means you know that you tak tahu apa yang you baca. That means you are aware. That is actually metacognition. When you ask yourself, oh, apa? What what did I read? That is metacognition. Because it dah control. Automatically, they control your thinking process. 
Yeah? Okay? So, if you heard that little voice inside your head and say, Oh, I don't know what I just read. That is actually, you are monitoring or evaluating. If you take an action to remedy, uh, untuk membaikinya, that means you are doing a meta-cognitive strategy. Yeah? So, you know what you don't know and then you read again. That means you are controlling the process and if you involve in this kind of inner dialogue, you are experiencing metacognition. Yeah? So, dia sebenarnya rujuk merujuk kepada self-awareness tentang kita punya thinking and also learning process. So, maknanya bila kita tahu apa yang kita tahu dan tak tahu, kita boleh adjust. Kita boleh ambil tindakan to improve the situation. Right? And dia juga merujuk kepada awareness and control over your own thinking behavior. You aware and you control. Kalau tak faham, you biarkan terus saja baca. Tak faham juga baca. Like you are doing tanpa matlamat. Orang membaca tadi, sepatutnya you put an objective. You simply read without putting an objective. Kadang-kadang tengok title tu, dia ada strategi membaca kan? Tengok title, you dah agak. What is it about? So, I should be able to know what? Then you look the answer in your reading. Then you can focus. So, you punya metacognition boleh menjalankan peranan bila you tahu you punya objektif kat sini. Kan? Itu berbeza dengan santai ni reading lah. Yeah? But you have to focus what you are looking for. Baru kita boleh, dia boleh monitor dan evaluate. Then you boleh betulkan semula situasi. Ya? Yeah? Okay? Okay? So, metacognition is actually an important part of intentional learning since it involves actively thinking about what you know, what you don't know and how you can get better at knowing and applying what you know. Kalau kita dah tahu, kita nak applykan. Ya, yeah, secara aktif. Right? So, what the expert says, some of it inside your you boleh refer dekat you punya fact sheet tu tapi saya nak uh, bawa perhatian kepada flavors punya definition this is the person who coined the term metacognition ya yeah? dia kata it is individuals awareness about their own thinking process which enable them to monitor and regulate their thinking activity you aware you punya thinking process so that you boleh control you punya learning ya yeah? And there are also definition by Costa, tadi dah ada To plan a strategy To be conscious of our own step To reflect and evaluate our own thinking Best kan kalau student kita ada these skills? Best or not? Ha? Dia boleh plan a strategy bila dia nak buat tu Dia boleh consciously Understand step the step apa yang dia nak buat Lepas tu dia boleh evaluate the outcome Of dia punya work yeah? So mission bomb ni ada dalam you punya fact sheet yeah? uh, Again it's about awareness about their own knowledge What one does and doesn't know And one ability to understand, control and manipulate one's cognitive process So basically dia ada dua perkara lah Dia tahu dan dia boleh gunakan pengetahuan dia untuk kontrol dia punya thinking and learning process. Ya? Yeah? Again, so maknanya kalau kita student kita ada this ability, dia boleh plan a strategy to approach a learning task. Okay? Dia boleh ambil necessary step to solve a problem, to reflect and evaluate result. And to modify their approach if needed. Yeah? So, maknanya, it help learners choose the right cognitive tool for the task and plays a critical role in successful learning. Okay? So, kita dah tengok daripada awal tadi tentang what is metacognition. Okay? What is metacognition that you should be able to know 
the difference between cognitive and meta cognitive and how it uh, complement each other so kita dah tengok yang tadi isi-isi dia cognition dan metacognition yang kita dah sebutkan tadi dan beza antara kognitif dan metakognitif strategi ya yeah. so kalau kita tengok yang daripada functional role tadi dekat kognitif tu ialah basic mental abilities that you use to think ya yeah. you recalling information from the memory you analyzing sounds and images making association between or comparing and contrasting different pieces of information and making inferences or interpreting the text yeah and they help individual to achieve a particular goal like comprehending a text or solving a math problem or they can be individually identified and measured yeah whereas the metacognitive strategies in contrast are used to ensure that the overarching learning goal is being or has been reached by using planning using appropriate skills dia akan choose mana skill dan strategi nak guna and monitor dia punya proses as well as they assess and evaluate dia punya outcome of the learning ya yeah? so uh, by this i hope you can write down now here what do you understand by meta cognition and its role in a learning process. Ya, yeah. boleh tak saya dapat beberapa consensus with definition C the outcome of this class. Okey. Kita selalu cikgu tanya orang belakang kan. <laughs> Tapi kita sekarang tanya orang tengah-tengah. Okey, Nuzia ni punya group punya consensus boleh bacakan? Uh, pay attention ya. Yeah? It's more toward uh, a systematic way of thinking when a person need to use his prior knowledge, uh, planning strategy, taking a necessary step to achieve the goal, and uh, the role in the learning process is to monitor their thinking behavior uh, as for well, as for well to perform a task. Ah, oh, this is a very good, very good definition. Can I borrow? <laughs> See, a systematic way of thinking when a person need to use his prior knowledge. This prior knowledge is actually referring to the what, how and why. That means, yang what, how and why tu yang kita buat selalu dalam kelas, you have to label them. Then only they can use back. The what, how and why. Kadang-kadang kita tak explicitkan dia. So, they don't label it. So the 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 apa untuk tendency untuk menggunakan semula tu agak susah. Tapi kalau dah ada nama oh yang ini kena guna ABC. Ah yang ini mungkin guna yang XYZ. So the labeling tu kita kena help out so that we help our students learn. Ya. Yeah? So dia kata uh, when a person needs to use his prior knowledge that prior knowledge itu yang kita kena banyak bagi the cognitive tools. Kalau ikut yang tadi yang functional mental operation tu pinjam ni sekejap the cognitive tools itu ialah the thinking skills that they use to process the information like maybe they have to visualize they have to uh, find the attributes they have to make inferences how to make inferences they have to predict tadi kita dapat prediction kan how to predict ya yeah? So, when they have this enough prior knowledge, they can successfully use it. The metacognitive can function so that they can help you to guide the thinking process. To guide, to direct, to help, to regulate the thinking process activity. Yeah? So, this is meaning they dah ada the planning, monitoring dan evaluating skill. Sebab tu dia ada complementary eh, antara cognitive and meta cognitive strategies. If you don't have enough that knowledge side, you cannot plan, monitor and evaluate effectively. Sebab tu kita tak boleh potong-potong belajar. Dia kena as a whole. Ya. Yeah? So, and 
What is this? Taking a necessary step to achieve the goal. Lagi, first thing they must be aware of the goal. This is very important. Selalu kita masuk kelas tak bagi tahu pun what is the goal. What is the objective of the learning? Do you think it is not important? Because that is the thing that can direct the student attention. Direct their planning to apa nak achieve. And boleh focus. Pay their attention. Actually dalam metacognition dia ada meta attention means whether you can direct your attention to the activity. Itu satu eh. Ada meta attention, meta comprehension, meta evaluation. Means dia aware yang dia kena pay attention. Dia aware yang dia kena monitor. Dia aware yang dia kena evaluate whether they are doing uh, whether they are going to the right direction or not. Kalau tak as good as dia tak perlu ada dalam kelas because we our role is to make sure that they are intellectually engaged in the learning process. Intellectually engage in the learning process. Kalau tak kita cakap seorang-seorang aje. You must give them activity. Kalau besar pun you can give them activity so that they involve in the deep thinking. Ya? Yeah? Okay? And what is the role in the learning process is they can monitor their thinking behavior. Ada yang rasa bagi definisi yang lebih bagus daripada kumpulan Nur Ziani ni. Ada? Yang nak share. Kalau tak share ni malam ni tak boleh tidur. Okay ya. Yeah? Yes. Can you read? Another good definition. Let me have it. Lepas ni kita boleh buat buku tentang metacognition ya. Eh? Alright. Siapa nama tadi? Azura. Oh Azura. Okay. One more ya. Eh? Kita baca. Kita compare. Can you now? Lepas dengar input ini. You can have the third draft. Baiki lagi. Boleh? Baiki lagi you punya definition tadi. After... You tahu satu kepala banyak kepala lebih baik daripada satu kepala kan? See if you can take in, take in and then make as your own internalize. Internalize means you may you must understand then only you take. Jangan ambil benda yang kita tak faham. Ya? Yeah? Mana Azura? Yang bawah sekali ya. Eh? Uh, as the outer layer mode of thinking. That means tadi saya sebut dia kata superordinate. Dia superordinate macam CEO kan Superordinate kepada Kognitif punya operation Ya yeah? Tapi dia sebut outer layer okay, tu. It interacts simultaneously Vertically and horizontally Macam mana tu Serentak sama ada Mendata eh mendata Atau menegak Menegak tu mendalam lah ya yeah? With cognitive processes Sebab apa dia kata macam tu Dia kena Pick, guide direct regulate the cognitive processes in in the form of supaya kita boleh capai objektif ya yeah? uh, creates one way of knowledge accommodation it give what is this to one's understanding about a domain or multi domain ni dia punya uh, dia punya isi content ya yeah? okey So basically, you understand what is metacognition. If I can summarize, firstly, you know, dia berinteraksi antara cognitive operation dengan metacognitive operation, which the cognitive operation mainly to do the meaning, making meaning, and the metacognition, the outer ataupun meta, superordinate kepada cognition yang guide, directs and regulate the learning and thinking process. Okay, can you finish up your definition? Can you say that now you know what is metacognition? Yes? Siapa rasa dia tahu apa metacognition sekarang? Angkat tangan. Uh, masih ragu-ragu? Belum? Yang 50-50 lagi? Yang tak tahu langsung? Uh, yang tak ada tangan? 
Okay, ada yang sukan tu. So, I think if, if 80% already know what is metacognition and what is the role in the learning process. Yeah, that is good enough for me. Alright? So, now, tadi dalam, I nak you baca kat fact sheet tu ada why, what is the importance of metacognition, nanti baca sendiri. Yeah? What the research say about metacognition. Right? So, we have to go through now how to teach for metacognition. Okay? So, for this, I would like you to do another activity. Before that, just now we said whether we want to teach as a single subject or whether we want to infuse throughout the subject. But this is what the research says. Yeah? They said direct instruction how to use metacognition may be not very beneficial because they akan tengok compartmentalize dan dia tak boleh nak gunakan in the context. That's why dalam kita punya strategi pun, in fact dekat kita punya sekolah pun sepatutnya dia infuse. Tapi bila infuse kadang-kadang dia diffuse. Lepas tu hilang langsung. Yeah? But if we see the importance of it, we should embed in our teaching and learning. Yeah? So, so they said when strategies are imposed rather than generated by the student themselves, performance may be impacted. But kita yang kata, you kena buat macam ni, you kena buat macam ni. But this sepatutnya the cognitive to the procedure comes from the student. Kita tak bagi lah. Kalau you nak buat problem solving, you buat macam ni. Kalau decision making, you buat macam ni. It comes from the expert. No. That should come from the student. How do you do it? That's why they guna one technique that call, that's called metacognitive reflection. We ask them back, how do you do it? And then we see the step they use and analyze what is the benefit of the step to the achievement of the objective. That's why you, bila kita, kita suruh dia buat, kita tanya balik, how do you do it? Right? So the next activity would be, how do you teach your class? Okay? Can we do this exercise, use another paper? Recall one class that you think you deliver the best. Okay? Write down step by step how do you conduct that class. Meaning, first what do you do? Why? Then what do you do? Why? Then what? Why? Until finally I do what? Why? As little as you can but mainly the big idea. Okay? Can we do that now? Another piece of paper. And label this as my best class. Ambil satu je. And go back to that class and recall what you did in your class. Yeah? Right. Okay, uh, saya ada bagi handout one. Do you print and bring it with you? The witness A, B, C, D. Yes? Okay. Can you please read the witness? A B C and D And find the attribute of that classroom The attribute of that classroom Okay So in your, in your L just now Kita dah pergi, tadi kita ada satu, dua, tiga kan? How to teach. So, there should be, we are accumulating your knowledge on how to teach meta cognition. Alright, uh, tadi kita dah minta, you now now you are focusing on how to teach ya. Yeah? Tadi kita dah buat what and why. Yeah, why? Why it is important in the student learning process? Uh, hopefully, you dah tahu what is metacognition and why is it important. Now, how to teach metacognition? That means how to infuse the metacognitive approach in your own teaching and learning. Yeah. So, tadi kita dah minta you. So, this side sepatutnya penuh lah kan? Okay. I give one example for the witness A that is uh, climate for thinking meaning the instructor give the student indication that you should be thinking first before you answer. This is very important. When we give question, we prepare them so that they answer the question before we ask for the 
answer ya yeah? so selalunya kalau orang psikologi dia akan kata psikologi is very important because student punya air muka dan sebagainya you don't ask question and ask for the answer straight away that is very bad actually if you do that it's very bad for the student because tension dia ya yeah, nak bagi jawapan serta-merta you must give time for them to think so that it become a culture that they don't simply answer spontaneously they must think first because they have to gather recall the information reason it out uh, use all the mental operation the thinking skill important to get come up with the question yeah kalau orang dia boleh jawab straight away je meaning dia tak gather the information from the you have you need time to recall right recall the information and then read or whatever gather the information to come up with a solution or understanding yeah so for this one the teacher the instructor set a climate for thinking right okay how about the number 2 they also have the climate right what do you find they have the climate also right the climate is here plus the skill the micro thinking skill kalau you suruh dia predict you, uh, what did we do just now i asked you to predict yeah so ada explicit teaching ada direct instruction about the thinking skill yeah right ada lagi tak dia sebenarnya banyak tapi kita sekarang nak fokus kepada the thinking process saja ya yeah? and number 3 dia ada nombor 1 dia ada nombor 2 tapi dia ada nombor 3 apa dia what the additional dia involve cooperative learning meaning what active involvement uh, dia boleh dia guna teori Vygotsky tahu Vygotsky pernah dengar Vygotsky kalau orang education kau tak dengar Vygotsky dia boleh <laughs> potong tangan dia. <laughs> Vygotsky said the learner construct knowledge melalui social interaction because dia sebab tu saya suruh you you buat you punya sendiri and then you verify tengok kawan punya sama ke tidak apa beza and then try to internalize apa yang dia punya apa sama apa weaknesses apa strength to verify your own knowledge tapi kalau dalam kelas kita tak boleh biarkan dia dengan kawan dia sepatutnya kita proses ya tadi saya proses sikit-sikit kan tapi sepatutnya kalau kelas besar pun kita take a few example tadi saya ambil one or two because i know all of you supaya semua dah bagus dah kan you have that already so dekat sini dia accommodate uh, untuk construction of knowledge melalui social interaction ya yeah? It's very important because dia akan bagi avenue kepada pelajar itu untuk think deeply. Yeah, deep learning. Yeah, the process. Kalau dia tahu dia kena explain pada orang, dia make sure dia sendiri kena faham. Sebab dalam learning yang paling efektif ialah to teach other people. So untuk educators ni, you should know. The best learning technique is to teach other people. Kalau tak ada orang lain, you cakap sendiri depan cermin. Ask your student. Try to explain dekat cermin. If you understand what you explaining, that mean you try, you dah gunakan banyak skills tu. To process, to reason, to judge, to evaluate. Yeah? It's very important. You tell your student. Kita tak suruh. Kita tak suruh dia buat. Kan? Can we tell them? Can we tell them? Suruh dia bagi tahu diri dia sendiri dulu. You can do this in the class. First give activity, ask them to do it themselves and then ask them to explain to the friend. You have, you have to make sure you tahu apa yang you explain kan? Betul? Ha, kalau you buat sendiri kadang-kadang you malas. So dia tak terlibat secara aktif. You tak involve, intellectually involve. So by giving that time. Macam ni maknanya kita strukturkan dia punya cooperative learning itu ya yeah? so di sini dia termasukkan dia punya deep learning tadi the deep learning caranya ialah ask them to share with others ya yeah? sebelum tu bagi time untuk dia buat sendiri dulu then be confident 
Lepas tu bila dia dengan kawan dia, dia berdua-dua dia tak takut sangat daripada dia panggil ke depan. Tapi lepas dia dapat konsensus berdua atau berempat, kita bawa ke depan. Do you think that they are more safer? The climate? Salah pun tak apa sebab saya berdua. Bukan saya seorang. Kalau you give the accountability kepada seorang saja bagi, lepas tu dia punya tak berapa betul kan? Siapa punya responsibility? Dia rasa very burden. Kan? Nampak tak the psychology of learning tu? You have to embed the psychology. The student punya maruah is very important. Jangan marah-marah dia. Kita puji je selalu. Tetapi kita kena pandai structure kan? So when they have that one, ini kita panggil tak betul, lepas tu kita marah. Tapi you tak ajar dia buat cara yang betul. Ha. Jadi kita ada share lah, share negatif. Kepada student punya development. Ya? Yeah? Alright? So it's very important dekat sini. Climate ada. Kita ada explicit tentang thinking thinking tu. Dan kita juga bagi dia peluang untuk deep learning. Ya? Yeah? Okay. Number four. Apa tu yang last tu? Dia ada reflektif. Dia tengok balik. Dia ada recalling proses. Ya, yeah. apa yang kita buat? Evaluate apa yang bagus, apa yang tak bagus, what to be improve. Okey. Kemudian, dan ini dia bergerak daripada kognitif kepada meta kognitif. Meta kognitif means dia akan bagi student aware of the learning process. They bring the student attention to the thinking process that they have gone through. So that kita encourage them to think about their own thinking. Okay? Can you see the four criteria? Now we have four criteria. Here is the metacognitive part. That means you are responsible uh, you are taking part to make the student aware of their thinking process how kita so they recall balik how do you do it see the step maybe share dengan kawan come up with the best step and, and evaluate and see what they they think that can be improved for future use So itu dia kita dah bagi dia the what, how and why. So that the what, how and why itu boleh digunakan bila dia buat perform the task the next time to plan, monitor and evaluate. Okay? Alright. So can you go back to your list? My best class tadi. I'm not going to read you. Tak, kita tak tengok semua, kita hanya tengok aspek ini sahaja. Where do you stay? Are you Dr. A or Dr. B or Dr. C or Dr. D? Can you make a column? See whether you can have this? Ini kebanyakan yang ada tak? Mesti ada kan? Tapi ada juga yang tanya soalan terus minta jawapan. Ada? Siapa ada? Cubit diri sendiri sekarang. <laughs> Cubit diri sendiri. That is very detrimental to the student development ya. Yeah? Dia pun tension tu masuk kelas tu. Cik Guni kan, cik ni, cik ni kena kena betul-betul sebab mungkin maruah saya akan tercala. Okey? So dia akan sembunyilah daripada awak. Bila awak bagi soalan dia akan tunduk sebab dia tak nak pandang muka awak ya. Yeah? Okey. So give them a time to think. Let them prepare first. Yeah, before you ask for answer. Sini semua ada? How about this? Do you label your thinking skill? This one is labeling. Okay, tadi kita sebenarnya buat you can you can model your thinking when you do it. Bila kita dia kita dah bagi tugasan, kalau saya saya buat macam ni. Mula-mula saya buat macam ni, lepas tu macam ni. That is modeling the thinking. Scale. Ada? Ada? Ke? Sini. Ha, sini banyak kan yang buat. Tapi kadang-kadang caranya mungkin betul atau tak? Betul. Ada orang buat cooperative learning? Ada? 
Semua buat. Do you know what is kuat perintah learning? Kerja kumpulan buat. Ha, kumpulan itu kumpulan tradisional ke kumpulan kooperatif? Kumpulan tradisional tu bagi kerja dan kumpulan gasan kau kalau kau nak buat macam mana? Lepas tu present. Ha, so what happen? Dia akan buat division of labor. So they don't learn all. Dia buat division of labor lepas tu cantum, compiling. Ya. Yeah? That is not cooperative learning. Lepas ni kita belajar cooperative learning nak? Okay. Alright. So here. And this one. Siapa dah buat yang ni? D ni. Tanya balik how do you do it? Belas bedah siasat. Apa yang kurang, apa yang betul. Ada. Saya rasa ada yang buat. Tapi you tak sedar itu ialah refleksi metakognisi. Ada kan? Ada. Dia segan nak mengaku tu. Sebab nanti nak kena suruh explain. Ya. Yeah? So this... Yang ini saya adapt dari Fogarty ni banyak tulis tentang how to teach metacognition. Dia panggil uh, A ni instructor yang satisfactory. Satisfactory lah. Sebab dia at least give time to think. Somehow budak akan develop the thinking. Eh? Here is a good instructor. Sebab dia ada juga explicit uh, direct instructional method for thinking skill. This one dia panggil excellent Sebab dah masukkan deep learning So they learn the process And this one dia panggil Superior teachers Because they are not only teaching For the moment But for the long run Because in the process The student learn the soft skill If you remember the MQA domain The 8 domain of MQA outcome learning Do you remember? The knowledge the practical skills and the six another soft skill kan one of it is the critical and creative thinking do you think you help your student to develop that skill tapi kalau kita buat yang ini pun there are the working in team communication skill right confidence leadership that can be covered in this teacher And here, they ada terus kepada lifelong learning Sebab they can transfer the skill for their uh, future Right? Okay So, dalam handout yang kedua Ada handout kedua? That is the four dimension of teaching with metacognition One is teaching for thoughtfulness kita suruh dia berfikir One is teaching of thoughtfulness Maknanya apa yang dia fikirkan Third, with thoughtfulness Kita cover termasuklah proses pembinaan makna tadi ya, Dengan lebih mendalam And number four, they call teaching about thoughtfulness That means making the student thinking more visible to them Visible by asking them to think back how they do it. I ask you to recall how do you do it step by step. That is actually what is it? This is actually metacognitive reflection. What, how you do it? Lepas kita bagi assignment yang buat kerja whatever tu Kalau kita katalah dia, so dia buat kerja in work pun tak apa How do you do it? What do you do first? Then kita boleh uh, That is the processing The learning process That means we on, not only concentrate on the content But as well as the learning process Kita tak ada learning process as a subject But in embed Because these are important in the outcome The student outcome learning tadi tu Yang soft skill tadi tu How do you think that you can achieve that soft skill if you don't do this? Right? But make it explicit to them. Otherwise, they know that they they don't know that they have it. Yeah? Okay, so this is example of metacognitive reflection. Okay? So you can, now you know, you can relate yourself how, at what level you are, At least, maybe you already do this one or this one. One and three at least there. But here, maybe you need to 
uh, see more how you can benefit the student. Yeah, but perhaps you have to see how you can do this and also the metacognitive part. Yeah, not every time you teach you have to put. It depends on the situation. You know, where you not every day you are using the metacognitive reflection. Right. Okay, we have another 45 minutes. This, we have done this. And this is what I'm talking about just now. We have four. You have it in your handout. That means for the four, they are setting the climate. For the teaching of, they have climate plus explicit teaching. And for the with, other interactive classroom to support student deep thinking. Nanti ni saya bagi ya. The PowerPoint saya bagi. I don't give uh, earlier because this is interactive, alright? So lepas ni saya akan bagi pada urus setia. Okay? Then you can email to everybody. And teaching about is go beyond cognitive into metacognitive, meaning that uh, there are element of reflective discussion about the the strategy they use, you know, for future use, for improvement, so that they are aware of the learning process. Okay, I think in each field they have their few, uh, their own strategies. So this is across the discipline, not not a generic skill. All right. Okay. So the conclusion is by including the teaching for, of, with, and about thinking, the teachers actually teaches not only for the moment but for the long run because you actually teach them how to think as well and we definitely uh, want you to move towards superior teachers which causes the student to be aware of their own learning and to be strategic and reflective about their own learning strategic and reflective apa you nak capai how are you going to capai evaluate whether you have capai or not this is strategic learning with a purpose Okay, activity with a purpose. Kita kata tindakan bermatlamat. Maknanya bila kita buat, we know what we are doing, how to achieve and we see whether we have achieved that. And for the teachers punya perspective, for the instructor, kita pun ada tu kan dalam outcome based education. What we want them to achieve, how through the activities and the assessment whether they have achieved or not. So the student must do as well. But we are the one who facilitate their learning. Yeah? Okay? Dalam uh, fact sheet tu ada beberapa cadangan oleh Fogarty how to uh, embed, how to teach for metacognition. But here I give also some of it. Yeah? But before that, Swartz and Perkins said there are four levels of metacognitive thought. Yeah? The first level is tacit use. Saya rasa rakan-rakan sini semua ada. Tetapi is at the level of tacit use where you buat tapi without thinking about it. Kan? Okay. Kalau yang kedua aware use, dia aware that you are using it. And then the three is also good strategic use, you dah boleh pilih yang mana strategi nak pakai. And then reflective use, bila you nak pakai tu you reflect before, during and after. Hari ni yang dia punya metacognitive skill tu dah complete dari segi planning, monitoring and evaluating. Ya? Yeah? Okay. And there are few suggestion from Costa how to do how to teach for metacognition, you concentrate on the planning strategy. Ya? Yeah? Uh, that means planning, monitoring and evaluating strategy start prior, during and after. Uh, he also suggested about taking credit, you know. Bila kita bagi student buat certain performance, kita bagi feedback. That feedback will add to their cognitive tools. Feedback from instructor is very important. Dia kena, kita selalunya bagi dia tugasan for them to perform and we should be giving the feedback so that they can improve their tools, yeah. Outlawing icons, insisting on problem solving and possibility thinking. Yang ni nanti boleh, you boleh google dan cari secara lebih mendalam lah. Some of the activity, paraphrasing or reflecting bank student ideas. 
Kalau dia dah bagi idea, kita paraphrase and mungkin we'll bagi certain-certain label Kalau dia melibatkan thinking skill yeah? And question generating yeah? Asking student to generate their own questions about content Satu lagi kita kena ajar juga student how to ask question Actually the big five tu pun dah cukup kita ajar dia yeah? Kalau kita ada dia punya KWL tadi What they already know, what they want to know This one can be as a source to ask a question Ya, yeah, during the lecture uh, Costa ni dia bagi banyak lah juga ya yeah. Labeling the student behavior Okay Clarifying student terminology hmm. Kalau dia bagi apa-apa, suruh so dia explain more Ya yeah. And then role play and simulation Having student play the parts of other person Characterizing their points of view So nanti ada beberapa strategi yang dia boleh gunakan Journal keeping and modeling tadi ya eh. Bayer pula dia gunakan queuing teknik Yang ini uh, kalau macam orang ICT dia develop courseware kan Dalam tu sepatutnya ada queue queue teknik Tapi dalam kita uh, apa ni deliver our class also we can have this queue teknik yeah? The student monitor sendiri Dia faham ke tak faham dan they can ask back yeah? Alright yang tu ya, eh, what other way I can do it Also, they can analyze apa yang dia dah buat And then how does it work Sama ada dia efektif ataupun tidak Efficient ataupun tidak yeah. And can I do it again in another way How can I help someone else to do it Dia ini, ini kita guna falsafah teach other people Ya yeah. For ganti, saya rasa you baca sendiri dalam fact sheet Ya yeah. Ada banyak, dia bagi planning dan saja Monitoring phase pun ada, evaluation pun ada So what is important is The goal of teaching metacognitive strategies is to help learners Become comfortable with these strategies So that they employ them automatically to learning tasks yeah? Focusing their attention Deriving meanings and making adjustment if something goes wrong That means they take charge of their own learning process Yeah. So they do not think about this skill while performing them But if asked what they are doing, they can tell Oh, I do it this way, this way and this way yeah? So actually there are many metacognitive tools uh, I don't think I can uh, But I'm going to show some examples that you can use uh, Very handy one, handy tools that you can embed in your own teaching and learning So I would like to start with Planning techniques Sometimes we can start with the STEM uh, Statements yeah, You ask your student to complete responses to STEM Then share it with partner These are uh, things that they can do Individually and then share with the partner yeah. The prediction I would like to go back to the KWL Like what we do This one Like directing student thinking Focusing their activity This is KWL Right? And the bad tu, I nak, the prediction ni, saya nak you recall, revisit the Apple video tadi Tadi you buat prediction kan? Can you recall how do you predict what happen next? And write step by step, how do you predict? Ingat tak tadi? Memang saja lama baru pergi balik, nak tengok you boleh recall ke tak? How do you make the prediction tadi? Can you go back to your punya kerja mula-mula tadi? As we start the introduction, the video I ask you to make prediction I buat tu bukan saya saja nak sampai kat sini okay. yeah. So go back to the one, recall How do you make your prediction? Can you write step by step? Yes, still have time This is actually what we call metacognitive reflection After you give a task, ask them to recall back how they do it Yeah. Okay, make your own And then compare your step with your partner Lepas tu come up with procedure how to predict So the next time bila dia predict, dia tak ada predict Main suka-suka predict Oh, dia dah ada step dia Mula-mula, I buat apa Lepas tu, I buat apa Lepas tu, I buat apa And this one, don't come from you You must come from the student That's why you ask them to do Yeah? Okay I give you, a, I'll give you about Three minutes for this have to collect the information first And then analyze the information relevant to the prediction yeah. Then only you put forward your prediction yeah. exactly. 
That's normally what you do. But sometimes, you know, when we ask children, how do you do it? I just do it. They cannot even recall what they are doing. The mental oppression that involves, even with ours, our, when I do with my students, the, the university students, there are some lacking, some they can, they can recall in terms of procedure. That procedure is actually the mental operation. The mental operation, that one in the thinking skill, we have the micro thinking skill, the processing, conceptualizing, the recalling, the analyzing, interpreting, reasoning, you know. These are all the mental operation. And they are not aware what are mental operation they are using when they perform a certain task. That's why we, if we go to the second one, we give label. Oh, you, what you are doing is actually predicting. That one, first thing you do this one, and then you do this one, and then this one. This one is what the Costa say about labeling the thinking process. Labeling. So they know. Tak ada nama susah kan? Actually, kita selalu, selalu nak bagi categorizing is one of our nature, right? Bila kita tengok, kita categorize. Kita bagi name. Tapi ada benda-benda yang walaupun itu nature sepatutnya, tapi kita tak buat. We don't do it. We don't give name. So, people tak kenal. Memanglah apa ada pada nama kan? Tapi tak ada, tak kenal, maka tak cinta. Ya? Yeah? Okay, so now start giving names to the behavior, thinking behavior. Right? So, uh, this one, in thinking we can say, this one, uh, Fogarty give one, they say, uh, ask student to predict what's next. They say, the acronym is BEAR. Based on facts or information at hand. Same tak? Sama kan? And then, express possibilities and, ini you analyzing tadi. When you analyze. This one, the expert say. But whatever the students say, actually can be used. Can be accepted. Not necessarily nice word like this. But it convey the same meaning. Yeah? And finally, baru tender your bed by taking a guess. You tak ada lah guess suka-suka hati. You must base on some logical reason or systematic reasoning. Eh? So do you think predicting is important skill in our learning? Eh? So maknanya they have this knowledge about predicting, how to predict the disposition. That means you cannot just simply do. You must base on the information and some logical and reasoning. Okay? Can it? Why do we need to predict? Why do we need to predict when you solve a problem? When you do, you come up, you want to generate alternative, isn't you use a prediction? The alternative solution? And that alternative solution must be based on information. Yeah? Okay. That is only some example. Okay? Alright. So this KWL also you can use. This is also part of metacognitive tools that can help students to direct their attention. That should can be used before you start your class. Like I did KWL. I try. Hypothesis more scientific. Prediction is actually phone must be based on scientific hypothesis. Okay. As much as I can, I try to include the tools so that I can walk the talk. Alright, so maybe I already do the KWL with you and also the prediction. See what is suitable. Yeah? But the rest, uh, maybe I cannot give so much. And then there is the planning. Nanti kalau ada, we can give you the listing, what are the tools and then you can Google sendiri macam mana kita boleh guna tools untuk implement metacognitive uh, punya approach. Yeah? The monitoring mechanism uh, to look over and monitor ada beberapa lah contoh like talk to yourself ini membuat refleksi metakognisi ya eh. and then cue card masa you dah bagi lecture you stop give activity ask back like what I did I stop every how many minutes kalau untuk student biasanya 15-20 minutes after a lecture you stop and see what they are comprehending what they are constructing ya yeah. A good teacher never ask student paham ke tak? Did you ask that question? No. Ah, cubit diri lagi sekali kalau you tanya faham ke tak? 
you must give them the opportunity to perform and show what they are constructing. This is what constructivism is all about. Meaning, the student construct their own meaning, their own knowledge. But we are the one who facilitate and see what they construct. Don't leave it for themselves. We must process back. When you give work, process and give feedback. Feedback is very important in learning process. So that they can verify, compare and contrast and analyze. Yeah? So otherwise you wouldn't know. Right? Okay, lastly is the alarm clock. Stop and reflect and stress that student needs to stop. This one also, if you use like just now, I stop many times like when I use the KWL so that you are directing their attention to the achievement of the objective. Because from, from now, every now and then, you keep on telling, okay, what is our objective? Alright? Do you achieve the objective? So the K, the W, the L will direct the attention and see what they are constructing. Yeah? Alright? So, and uh, another thing is the evaluating tool also is for you to help the student to have that evaluating skill. In the metacognition, we have the planning, monitoring and evaluation. So, we also use some of the evaluating tools so that we can help them to get these skills as well. Yeah? Ini nanti kita bagi ya. Like the big idea. So, we give them the generalization based on fact, inferences, conclusion, how they can use it. Yeah? Selalunya kita gunakan refleksi metakognisi macam yang kita buat tadi. So, that they can uh, make the thinking step visible to them. So, that they can analyze the strength and the weaknesses. Yeah? Ada satu nanti saya tunjukkan my reflection. Yeah? This one. Uh, this one also we can use. Uh, dalam bentuk we call this graphic organizer yeah, for the student to use uh, what I did actually this one maybe afterwards you, after when you go back when you try to use whatever tools that we have decided today you write this one in your own reflection journal you know so you see what did you do actually okay and then reflect on the activity what are the pluses and the minus and what are the thoughts you have so that you can improve the next time you want to use the same tools you know so same thing with the student they also can use this you know so that whenever they use the same more or less the same strategy they can look back at their reflection journal yeah so i hope you can use this after trying to use some of the tools and then you write back and see how you can improve in your next lesson yeah so, now we have, I have shown you, you have recalled back your own class and then we have seen the four uh, style of learning according to the metacognition and teaching, the satisfactory, the good, excellent and superior. And then you see whether your teaching have that characteristic. Now, we want to see your performance. Okay, again, I want you to write again based on your own teaching. Can you relate with your reflection just now? Your level, your best class, your best class. Go back to that one, to your reflection. And see, identify where in your step just now that you can integrate metacognitive elements in your next lesson. This is your best class. You have the characteristic of a, B, C, D, just now, right? And then try to see where you can embed using the same class that you have uh, recorded just now. Yeah? Okay? I can give you another maybe uh, three or five minutes, right? Okay. Uh, I am very sorry. Maybe because some of the tools too, hanya sikit sikit kita sentuh because this is a seminar, like, belum bengkel lagi. But within that, what we are given and what you have got, maybe you can embed some of it in your teaching and learning and see how it can influence your student learning. Yeah? 
So boleh tak kita Kita ada berapa minit lagi 10 minit lagi uh, I can get one or two How do you Five minutes time Oh okay Can we uh, summarize How how you integrate? How are you going to integrate Metacognition uh, Metacognitive elements in your next lesson Anybody Would you like to share? Uh, I can try. Yeah. Step by step. Mm -hmm. uh, which one? Which aspect that you want to embed? Which uh, tools you use? Maybe uh, we could use a mind map to ask them to create a mind map uh, for the lessons that we give them so that they know where they are, uh, what they know, and, and also find out uh, what they don't know. Okay, so Tien akan guna mind map to so that the student will be able to show what they already know and what they don't know so that they can uh, more or less uh, come up with a plan how to achieve what they don't know, yeah, what to do. Okay, mm -hmm. ada yang lain mind map? You ambil dari mana tu mind map? From Fogarty. Okay, ada lain tak? How do you want to embed the mental cognitive tools in your lesson? So that the student are more aware of their uh, learning process. Anyone? Uh, how come I don't see the names already? <laughs> you have uh, sabotage here. The buang nama ya. Anybody? Uh, Nozaini, Noziani, Noziani. Can you share? Uh huh. How are you going to do it? What do you do? What do they do after they do the reflection? They have to go up for the interview. Mm -hmm. uh, and then they have to uh, reflect what they get from that interview and how they can improve themselves. How they can improve? Uh, themselves. themselves. Uh, what they get from the interview, maybe the content. Yeah? But also maybe you can uh, include the process. How do you interview? What are the challenges when you do the interview? Uh, so that they can see the strength and their weaknesses when they use the interview strategy. So that they can improve the next time they have to use the interview strategy. Yeah? So make, uh, meaning when you do the reflection, you must make sure that the student can see uh, the strength, the weaknesses and how they can improve so that they can improve for the future use. Yeah? Ada lagi? Reflection, mind map And then Fogarty ada bagi banyak Maybe you can try in the reflection nanti So, how to uh, use metacognitive tools Actually, uh, sebab masa dah tak ada I have the closing activity actually uh, This one is, uh, you can use After you conduct any lesson Definitely you can ask your uh, participant or your student to list back what skill you have learned. This is very important. So that, just now we use the KWL, they can map back yeah, what they have, what they already know, what they want to know, and what they have learned. This is the aspect of what they have learned. Yeah? So I would ask the participant to write back what you have learned from this session. You know, uh, you list uh, as many as you can and then I would ask you I don't do the the practical thing I just give the theory now and then I would ask you to uh, do into the team or four and then take the four list and merge so that you learn from each other what you are supposed to learn and then in here you can make the summary what you have learned about the topic in the session yeah so this is the closing activity all right so i hope i have time to do that but we don't have enough time apparently so i have to stop with that but the conclusion is i hope what you have read what you have right here is what is meta cognition can i see hands 
about metacognition. We have already processed what is metacognition. Yeah? I have a very good and beautiful definition come up from the participant. I would like to have that actually. Right? And then you also already tell me just not about why we must uh, 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 emphasis on metacognition and how to teach metacognition. Right? So basically when we want to apply metacognition approach, we should teach students about metacognition. The, the number five, number four, the superior teachers. Yeah? That means we also must support the thinking about thinking. We should design the class activity so that the student can be made aware of their thinking process. Make aware. Make the thinking process visible to them. Yeah? So there are uh, some pedagogical strategies like cooperative activities that I did a lot with you all just now. After action reviews, journal script, and then explicitly teach learning strategies in the context of the subject. Yeah? I, I got a question from one social science yeah, background. How to teach if you have so many concepts? You know? Just now I told you about the best teaching strategy, learning strategy is to teach other people. You are not spoon feeding all the materials. You must design the activity so that the student involved deeply in the learning, in the constructing the knowledge. Yeah? Okay? And use metacognitive tools to promote planning, monitoring and evaluating. I have introduced some of it just now. I, I, I do with you the prediction, the KWL and my reflection. Okay, so within this limited time, I hope you get some benefit and me, I hope you smile and say yes, I am okay here. <laughs> Alright, with that, I end my...